You're listening to Inspire Change, a broadcast that strives to educate, motivate, and empower men to challenge traditions of masculinity. To guide us through the intricacies and intersections of emotions, relationships, and male identity is renowned psychologist, author, and speaker, Gunter Swoboda. This is Inspire Change. I want to introduce a tradition here for this podcast and all future podcasts we're in. I'd like to respectfully acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. They are the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet. I pay my respects to the elders, past and present. Knowing the stories of the Aboriginal people will always be written in this landscape. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Inspired Change. So... I'm hoping that everybody who's been listening to the podcast has been enjoying it, um, been receiving some food for thought, uh, and in fact, indeed, thinking about making some, you know, changes in their life and possibly influencing others to change some of their lives for the better. And so that's always the question in my mind is, is, you know, where do we go from where we're at? And in the last... 30 to 40 years of my life, I've actually been watching us as a humanity descending rather than ascending to a higher place. Although within that descent, there are those bright sparks who light up an optimism, who give me hope that we can do better and that we will do better and that we will survive the various uh, patriarchal atrocities that have been sent upon us by those old dinosaurs still wanting to retain power and rule the world, essentially. None other than the likes of Putin and Trump, who in the last few years have created an absolute storm of stress and distress and chaos. So what does that really mean? What, why am I bringing this up? Well, let me come back to my optimistic self. And as someone working in the field, as a clinician, and as someone who is looking at the impact of society on the individual, because I deal with often trying to mop up the consequences of a system that has been toxic and has killed not just women and children, but men uh, over the millennia. Now, there's many, many people who give me hope. But one in particular that's popped up on my radar recently and that I want to talk about, and so in a sense a little bit of a departure from you know being cr- critical of the evolutionary psychologists, is to go to the under, other end of the scale. And that man is a man called Ivan Jablonka. And he is fundamentally a French social historian. And I just received a little while ago uh, his latest book, A History of Masculinity from Patriarchy to Gender Justice. And within the first few pages, uh, his work just resonated with me. It was, it, it, it's a beautifully written book. It is exceptionally well-researched. Um, and it follows very, very much along the lines of my work in both uh, making good men great, surfing the new masculinity, but also the upcoming documentary, uh, A Crisis or The Crisis of Man or Men. Interesting thought about that one. Might need to change that title. Not sure if we're going to run with man or men, but let's see how we go. So... Um, why am I highlighting Ivan Jablonka? Apart from the fact that he does, you know, come at it very, very much from the place that I am, he offers uh, an optimistic view about what we as men can do to rid ourselves of what he calls the gender prison. In the, in other words, he says men are trapped in a gender prison. And to me, that has always been, you know, very self-evident. That is that we are stuck in an antiquated ideology, uh, you know, a 
consecutive set of memes that have, you know, perpetuated a system that is no longer viable. It is no longer viable for women. And women have risen, in, you know, in, in the pursuit for equality through feminism. Uh, and he, he does raise an interesting question in my, in my mind because I've always stated that I'm fairly reluctant to call myself a feminist. And he hasn't persuaded me to do that. In fact, my view is that um, I come from a humanistic school. That is, we are ultimately human beings. And as human beings, some of us are male, some of us are female. Some of us fall into categories yet defined. And so let me talk talk a little bit about the content of this book, which is, as I said, I can't, I can't recommend this highly enough. It is, it, is, it is an exceptionally good piece of work, uh, probably in line with uh, Goethe Lerner's the, the, the Creation of Patriarchy. So what's he talking about? Well, apart from the fact that he, like me, traces patriarchy back well, he takes it back to the Paleolithic. I go through as far back as the agricultural revolution. And he creates a very, very good case for this ongoing perpetual ideology. Um, wherein he says, over millennia, a patriarchal system's benefited the majority of men um, and bolstered a masculine culture of domination to which women were subjected to sexual violence and sexist stereotypes. And the key thing is that, you know, patriarchy sees women in, you know, the three contexts of reproduction, pleasure and care. You know, so as long as women adhere to this, men don't have a problem. If women start to break out of that realm, then we start to see men get uneasy. And that's one of the points that he makes is that men fundamentally have been reluctant to embrace change. And, you know, my comment about that is, well, if you're on a good thing, stick to it. You know, it's been a pretty good wicket being in charge of everything and um, really, you know, having no one other than other men to contend with. It's good if you're on top. Um, so where to? Well, as I argue, is that fundamentally it is a man's job to begin to deconstruct patriarchy. We need to be a driving force. It's important for women to create the space for them. That's one of the reasons why I'm a bit reluctant to call myself a feminist. I don't want to usurp women's voice in the, in, in the their part for equality. Um, I want us men to be part of the process of change that gives both men and women the opportunity to step out of the patriarchal shackles. Um, now, the other part that Jablon had talks about is that he doesn't want to really give up the whole notion of masculinity completely, and neither do I. Um, you know, for those of you who've seen pictures of me, I'm probably very quintessential male in my appearance, um, and also more than likely in my behaviour, although perhaps I'm not a good judge of that. Emotionally, however, uh, I embrace the parts of me that are about altruism, care, compassion, uh, those things that patriarchy has relegated to the sideline or even attempted to subjugate altogether. Uh, we, we need, as um, R.W. Collins says, embrace masculinities. It's not just one masculinity especially if it's the traditional one. You know, the traditional concept of masculinity needs to be redefined in a changing society. And as men, we've tried to hold on 
to the old ways. And as I said, you know, some of the people that are in charge are more akin to dinosaurs who should have stayed fossils rather than attempt resurrection in every generation. And so it stands that, you know, a lot of young men actually are trapped by the patriarchal memes that have infused their upbringing. And so, in essence, they are a young body with a Stone Age mind. A little pinch from the evolutionary psychologists there. Now, we also need to acknowledge, and he does as well, that um, the 20th, 20th century fundamentally uh, created a platform of so much change uh, that it represented you know, the progress of women. But at the same time, you know, it represents a decline of men in, you know, in their masculinity in a way. And part of that is not because the change of women becoming more equal is bad. That bit's good, but it's our inability to respond effectively towards that change and embrace it and run with it. Um, things like, you know, um, our roles as men have changed. You know, we've, we've you know, seen the deindustrialization. Um, in most societies, in English-speaking societies, men's suicide rates are through the roof. And this is something that I deal with on a daily basis. Um, you know, we, we as men collectively truly, truly are in crisis. Uh, but we need to embrace a process that's going to get out of this. We can't rely on going back to an old, old way of thinking and being. So the problem with all of this is that men have been pushing back. And so we get people like, you know, Jordan Peterson, uh, Joe Rogan, and, and a lot of those sort of guys in the, in the sort of shock jock industry holding on to ideas and trying to perpetuate them that do not serve us well and will not. They've had their day. Um, we need to become more open and more deeper in how we embrace life as men. And, you know, there's this trap that we keep falling into of, of seeing the traditional male characteristics as virtues, and they're not. Um, you know, we need to stop shape, shaping boys, you know, into uh, little patriarchs, into little alpha males, for there isn't such a thing. So Jablonka's solution is to task men with stripping masculinity of its misogyny. Okay, so that's a really important point, and it was one that was made by a guy called Freddie Hayward in an article that he wrote about uh, Ivan Jablonka. The idea there is that it's not that we need to get rid of masculinity, but that we need to take an element out of it, and that element is misogyny. This Lots and lots of different ways of being a man. And we, we can see that every day in society, but it is a, it's a process of trying to suppress it and repress it. You know, Jordan Peterson talks about a little boy who's you know, desired to pick up a, a gun and fire it with the suppression of masculinity. That's utter rubbish. What about the little boy who wants to play with a doll called Jenny and wants to dress her and care for her? You know, why is that not considered to be part of the masculine repertoire? Right? And it's these ideas that stifle boys to men and, and jail them in this gender prison. So in Making Good Men Great, I talk about, firstly, men need to deconstruct patriarchy. We need to embrace a richer, more dimensional uh, masculinity. And in fact, we need to explore different styles of masculinities. I saw a picture the other day of Brad Pitt wearing a skirt at a function. I thought, that's really brilliant. 
Now, it wasn't a kilt. It was a skirt. Now, those, the Scots obviously would want to make a, you know, a distinction be, between that. But it's, it's the whole point. It's not trousers, okay? Now, how many of us would feel comfortable in doing that? Now, I suspect if I tried it, uh, and I have worn a kilt, which was slightly different, but it, it, there's a bit of a discomfort initially with it. You know, it is. it can be quite exposing. Um, but at the same time, it's also extraordinarily comfortable and liberating. And, you know, someone who through my, most of my youth and even still today, I often wear a sarong. Uh, I'm quite comfortable with the whole idea, but wearing it out into a function like Brad Pitt did, that's another, that's another level. Uh, and I wouldn't mind exploring that. So... We need to keep going at this. We need to keep exploring the boundaries of what we consider masculinity to be. And this is where I think uh, Ivan Jablonka's book fits really neatly into it. He does propose some things, and I'm going to continue reading it and and maybe deep diving into it further Um, because a lot of it, just looking at the um, some of the topics, uh, like strong girls and feminist boys. Well, absolutely. You know, I'd like to see boys, you know, feeling comfortable in the more caring, altruistic and nurturing part of being who they are. These are not gender roles. These are human roles. And so in that whole context, I want to explore that further. So again, I highly recommend this. As I said, I'm about halfway through the book. Um, and I think that uh, I will do a deep dive into this over the next few podcasts because it really strongly resonates with me. And at some point, uh, Ivan would definitely be someone I would like to have um, some conversations uh, uh, with over possibly a cup of coffee or even more importantly, dinner. So he's definitely uh, a potential guest. So until next time, let me encourage you to read for it broadens the mind and allows you to experience life from different perspectives. And I think that's important. We need to be open-minded. We need to be non-judgmental and we need to grow as a human being. And no better way to grow than through our experiences of reading important, well-read and well-written books. Until next time, this is me signing off, and I hope to hear from you. Thank you for listening to Inspire Change, a broadcast that strives to educate, motivate, and empower men to challenge traditions of masculinity. For more information on the Making Good Men Great movement, or for individual or group coaching sessions with Gunter, visit makinggoodmengreat.com. For inquiries regarding broadcast topics or appearing on the show, email miranda at noartainment.com. That's Miranda at N-O-I-R-T-A-I-N-M-E-N-T dot com. <laughs>